this is a fingertip and if you look at this carefully you can see the outline of the finger now if you look at your own fingertip you'll see the flesh goes across like that and then you have a bump like this and where the bone separates and goes into the next bone it's identical in architecture so the anatomy is virtually identical to a human finger I don't know what to say but this came off of a, I have the palm that goes with this and the palm is is three feet wide and I have other fingers fingertips to go with too they're more re, um, they're more um, decomposed and then I have a, uh, a knuckle that goes with this too and it all came out of a, a small hole so I assume there's a lot more of this but these are mud fossils and this is not being accepted and fortunately to my good friends uh, at, at uh, Jesse Garant and Associates uh, we're being able to prove this. Now I've had DNA tests done on these things too and it's, it's proven there's DNA here. So the things that I'm showing are not just you know rocks they're actually mud fossils and this is a new form of fossilization nobody's just ever noticed. I mean it's not new, it's just nobody ever looked here before because they look in the dry stuff because somebody said don't look in mud. Alright you can see that the the penetration of the blood vessels and so forth is not deep and those that this is the only areas where there's little um, voids and we expect that in these particular types of fossils however if you look at the exterior you can actually see the fingernail and this always there's a really intense spot right below at the very end of the fingertip in the apical tuft and but you can actually see the exact architecture of a fingertip it sure looks like a fingertip to me and that's all I can say alright this is the bottom of the fingertip and as I turn it this way you can see these spikes over here they're triangular investments and all of the fingers that I find have these triangles just like that and that is where ligaments come across and grab into here or the uh, I'm sorry that would be between here areolar tissue above and then skin above that I believe that's what I believe I'm not sure uh, that's what I need Gil to take a look at. Alright, this is a lung that um, Jesse and Fabio and, and those guys scanned up at um, Jesse Garant and Associates. And this is where that, tri that little flap is, and it's broken off of this one. Now, I'm, and this is, I think, the back of the lung. That's the top, and this is the flat along the bottom. Now, I'm going to show you what I always find at the bottom. Is this kind of thing right over in here. Is it like a... See that flap was in there somewhere? There's a big investment in the bottom. There's a round circle in almost all the lungs that I find. And then I find that triangular flap. And like this is the surface and it goes deep inside, obviously those are all holes going in this is the top it has something going on here like the investment at the top and I don't know if that has any you know all the fashion and everything obviously is gone now look watch watch what goes on over in here as I move it you see that how cool that is And that feeds all of the everybody else, I think. You see it? Now there's also going to be one side or the other is going to be where the airway went in. And you'd know more about that, but 
I don't know. And I'm going down to the bottom, and this is the bottom. Once again, I always find something like this, a round spot at the bottom. Now that triangular investment would be right over here. That would be all filled in, but it broke off. Or it's not supposed to be attached, I don't know. But underneath here, it is like red stuff. And they always have that. So whatever that is, and anyway, this came out very good, thanks. And as you, actually, as you're playing through this, um, you find all of the different, here, watch. You see, see what's going on with that lung up there on the left? And all these, what happens is these get blown out of here because the acid etches them out. This is right near a volcano. And you're left with these holes. And those holes are what they call vugs. And those vugs end up creating little crystals. They propagate crystals where the metals um, collect after sublimation. Whoops, I don't even know if you can see that. I'm not even in the right spot, never mind. All right, this is the structure of tendons, and uh, they come in segments, and they sort of run together, and they slip back and forth between each other, and they keep breaking down finer and finer and finer until they get down to these little tiny fibrils that, that dig into the bone and the uh, cartilage and, and actually into the, um, into the skin and, and invest in, in a number of ways, and that's what holds those tendons in place. Now this is what a, a living tendon looks like and this is an Achilles tendon and that's the ball at the end and then it has a transition area here that's like there's several different chemical transitions that happen and this is where they all break they break right there but if they don't if they wouldn't didn't break and they because this, this is some kind of uh, mineralization happens in here some really tough stuff happens here and that's where it fractures now if it didn't this continues out all the way out until it hooks up with the meat of your flesh and then and and the muscle does the pulling and the tendon implant implanted into the structure moves whatever it's being pulled on now this is the way the blood supplies come and and they drive right in all along the sides here and then on the other side it feeds this area and then the, the head is fed as well and we see the same things happen in these mud fossils now I have actual tendon assemblies here that are mud fossils are gigantic and that those are the fibrils that end up coming and this is another tendon band that had another ball at the end. This was as round as a cue ball. And, uh, and of course I cut it. And you can see, if, if you see at certain planes, you can see the silicon fibers that are in there. And then these white plagioclases, uh, they're the very, very tough fibers that invest these tendons. And now here's another one that was um, in, an, in, an, in a volcanic area and it eats the fibers, the, t the, the um, uh, fluoric acid in, is only one of the only things that will eat the fibers. And I open this up in a number of ways so that it can be seen that those fibers are, are they become soluble and wash right away. But normally this would have invested, and that, of course this is the, the uh, fascia, but those, there is still some plagioclase fibers left in there, but those would have invested deep into the bone and the uh, cartilage and so forth and held this from, from being pulled out and that make it do its job. Alright, this is the wavy pattern of tendons, and you'll see this in the giant fingertip. And at the end of the tendons, at the end of the waviness, they embed in a ball into the um, structure below.
This is the giant fingertip, and I don't know what kind of an animal it's from, but it's a huge fingertip. And uh, it doesn't get any cooler than this. I mean, this is, these are tendons underneath. The bone is inside here, and it has this apical tuft inside the bone, and it's exactly, well, not exactly, but it would be fitting right in this area here. And you can see the architecture. Now, this is the ligament. I'm going to remove what I say is the bone. All right, you see underneath here, these are the, the um, blood supplies. And this is the waviness of the tendon, or ligament, whatever you want to, whatever this is, and Gill is the guy. Now, this is blood that drained out of here. That big, deep cut is the investment, uh, is the um, area between the tendons, and they all have them. And in between there, there is a lot of blood and a, 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 a real gooey, but I think they call it leucine-rich proteins. And this section right here is the exact same as this section. Now, you can see that this section down here is lower than where the bone would be. The bone is up in this area. And this area is what hooks onto it, and the tendons go come down here. And the same thing would happen here. And I have those investments. They're like this, these balls, they fit into these crevices, and this is the fibers going this way. Now this has been in acids, and what that does is it eats holes and takes the silicon out. That's, whoops, that's why all those holes are in this. This is one of these tendon assemblies. You know, they got to obviously cut it, but that's what this does. And if you took this off, we're going to be able to see inside here. You see, I just put it on here to show. This is where those things hook. And this is how they hook in. And that's where the fibers go. And they hook in like that. And over there. And there's several of them. They go right down the line. And this side, they're not broken off, they're still intact, they're right under this fleshy surface, and this would continue down, and you can see where it, this is the investment below, and this, if you can see, it has a wavy pattern, this has a wavy pattern, they follow this exact same wavy pattern, and in here, I can show with the microscope, you can see these are those tendon ball investments, there's a center, and these are the investments on the outside. Same thing here, all these fibers, all these fibers. It's just what it is. Gil is going to have to say what he thinks here, but, uh, you know, I'm not saying this is human, but it, uh, who knows? I have no clue. Anyway, that's one side of the finger, and this is the other side. Is deeply gauged, and all the blood blew out this side, so that would be the artery side of the finger. That's why this is not blown out, because it's the vein side. And this side blows out, and blood and everything blows out of here in between this side, and all this stuff gets disassociated because of the gaseous expulsion of that tissue. And they call it degloving. Now you notice how these are flat, flat, flat surfaces. And those surfaces are flat like that because this is from ultramafic rock. And ultramafic rock means it's deep, deep, deep in the earth and it just gets flattened and compressed by the earth forces. Now, if Gil, if you would look at this here, what I'm saying is this is ligament or tendon. Uh, so we can see that it's, it's cut here, so it, uh, I would say that we're almost dead on the tendon. Now, you can see there's layers here. There's one, two, three, four, at least four layers. and. There's a blood supply here. Now those four layers, I believe, are the sheath and then fascia and, you know, the, uh, I don't know, they have, you, you know more about that than me, but the tendon is this big chunk. And these things are a couple inch or an inch thick or so. If you can see deep down in that, that well there, uh, they're quite deep, and inside that well, there's all these little holes going this way 
in that way. And that is the, the blood servicing the tendons is what I believe. And I will show you those uh, those holes better at some point. But anyway, they're, they're there. There's no question. They look like the grill of a, uh, of a heater or something. It has little tiny holes. Like. Anyway, they, it's what it is now. I can't move this. My arm is bad. I broke my arm. I didn't break it, but damn near hurt it bad. Anyway, this, I believe, is the apical tuft. And this would be the bottom, and of course it is the bottom where it was laying. You see that black stuff. I'll tell you that that's where all the blood ran out and collected here. And the blood, of course, has that fer uh, ferritin, I believe it is. And uh, it also has carbon and all that business, so it turns black and ferrous oxides. Now, that's what it is. So, Gil, I need you to take a look at this and see if what I'm saying is making sense to you. Like I said, I have these. Tag right in here, and I have many of them. And then I have other ones that were not in acid, like this one right here. And you can see that shiny surface in there. There's no holes in this one. And that, that's where another one that was on top of here slid back and forth, and I have it around here somewhere. That was round as a cue ball on the end, and I cut it flat. There's another one that goes this way. And then at the end, these are where the fibers are, and here is where they invest. And if you look, this is what they call a rind around here. That is the fascia, is what I believe. Periosteum, whatever it is. Now this one, I believe, is... is, uh the surface of the skin or uh, you know it seems like it to me now uh, they're like these little flaps that go each other and they have straps coming in on them and they're fed with blood and there's a, like a little round investment with grabbers all the way around that grabs your skin <laughs> that's, that's what I'm finding and out here there's a, like a flap a tag that it comes out and, and, and then there's more skin that goes down and sort of latches over the edge. And they, I call them straps coming in and flaps. Straps and flaps. Uh, that's what I'm saying. And I think, it's, I think it's skin. And I believe this is that, again, silicon. And the silicon is a silicon dioxide. It's, it is, attaches to oxygen when the silicon in your skin virtually rusts. All right, Gil, this is um, what I believe is skin. That's the surface of the skin. And from here down, uh, there's a distance. And that distance is, I believe, the areolar tissue. And this is silicon. And that's the investment of the lower portion of the areolar tissue, I believe, into the basement layer. Now. Again, this is a, something you'd have to see. But there is a distance between the surface here and down here. And I believe that is the areolar tissue. And again, I always see them coming up this way and going down this way. Now, that's, the rest is up to you, buddy.